Hey guys, in this tutorial I'll show you how you can animate and add a 3D object into real footage using Blender and Adobe After Effects. So let's dive into it. First you need to have your 3D model. I'll be using this hat which I made in the previous tutorial. Then prepare the shot of the environment where you want to place this 3D model. To get realistic lighting later on, it's great to have a 360 HDRI image of the environment. If you don't have a 360 camera, you could also use a mirror ball and take photos at different exposures which you then combine together. Or you can download an HDRI from sites like Polyhaven and try to find one that roughly matches your scene. Now let's jump into Blender. First we're going to track the camera in our shot. So switch to the motion tracking tab and open your footage. I'm using a PNG sequence. First set the scene frames and click prefetch so we get a smoother playback. Now we need to add the tracking markers. You can either automatically detect these or you can add them manually by holding Ctrl and left clicking. Choose high contrast points so that they can be tracked properly. For the tracking model I'll choose location, rotation and scale since there is not much of a perspective change. Then hit A to select all tracking markers and start tracking. Now let's solve the camera. And we get an error of 0.35, which is pretty good actually. If your error is too high, you can go to cleanup and click filter tracks. Here you can change the threshold and delete the less accurate tracks. Then solve the camera again. You can also fill in the focal length of the lens you are shooting with. Great! Now let's hit set as background and set up tracking scene. This will add a plane and a cube into the scene and create a foreground and background collection. To align the scene with the footage, select three points to orient the floor, set the origin and finally with two points selected, set the scale. Back in the layout we need to make some more adjustments. Click 0 to get into the camera view. Select the camera and change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Now we can rotate the camera and match it with the shot. In order to get realistic shadows on the cubes, we need to rebuild the geometry in the 3D space. So rotate and scale the cube to match it with the cube in the shot. You can also turn on the X-ray mode. Now it's time to import our 3D model into the scene. To get realistic lighting, I'll use the HDRI I mentioned earlier. In the World tab, click on Color and choose Environment Texture. Then import the file. If you want to rotate the HDRI, you can go into the Shading tab, switch to World and use a Texture Coordinate and Mapping node. I want to keep the lighting but hide the HDRI so that it's not visible in the actual scene. To do this, go to the Render Properties tab and under Film, click Transparent. Of course you can add some additional lights. Furthermore, let's take a look at the animation. To animate the head, I use the Auto Keyframing feature, which can be enabled with this button. Also hide all objects that you don't need to avoid playback stuttering. Then hit Play, G to grab, and you can move the head around with your mouse. As you can see, the keyframes are created automatically. To make the animation smoother, we can go to the Graph Editor. First delete the rotation and scale keyframes, since we didn't make changes to those properties. Now select all keyframes, go to Key and choose Sample Keyframes to fill any possible gaps, and then Smooth Keys. You can also repeat the Smooth Keys option a few more times. Then using the same method I recorded the rotation of the head, made the keyframes smoother and aligned them with the location keyframes. We want to make the head cast shadows on the cubes. To achieve this, make sure you use the Cycles Render Engine, then select the cube and go to Object Properties. Scroll down to Visibility 
and enable Shadow Catcher. Do this for all of the cubes as well as the ground plane. You might also want to disable the diffuse and glossy ray visibility. Now if you have a very complex scene you may want to have multiple render passes which you can then use for compositing, but this is a very simple scene so I'm just going to show you how you can render the object and shadow separately. First organize your objects into collections. I'll keep my head in the main object collection and all of my shadow catchers in the shadows collection. Here on the top you can see your view layers. At the moment there are two view layers. Each view layer contains all of your collections and we can render these view layers separately. In the first view layer I want to see only the hat. Go to this filter icon and click on the holdout and indirect only switches so we can see them. Set the shadows collection to show as indirect only. This way we'll only see the hat in this view layer. Then go to the second view layer and set the head as indirect only. This means that the head will still cast shadows on the cubes, but the head itself won't be visible. In the compositing tab you can see we have our two render layers. One contains just the head and the other one the shadows. Currently they are composited together with the background footage, but we can use a simple file output node to export them as two separate files with a transparent background. Finally adjust the render settings and don't forget to enable motion blur. Then render your animation. Now we can bring the files into After Effects for final compositing. Import our background shot and the main object and shadows image sequences. You can adjust each layer separately and apply effects to them. As you can see the head should go behind the tree. So to fix this, you can duplicate the background shot and put it on top of the other layers. Then simply mask it out using the Roto Brush tool. And we are done. I hope you found this useful and if you did, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.